Hi, I'm Jessica Amir for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Imugene is CEO Leslie Chong. Leslie, welcome to the Finance News Network. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for coming. So first up, for those not familiar with Imugene, can you give us an introduction? Absolutely. So Imugene is a biotech company um, out of Melbourne, Australia, and we are squarely in the immuno-oncology space. We have a technology which invokes your B cells to produce antibodies against a cancer target. So meaning we basically invoke your immune system to create the drug against your cancer target. I have an incredible management and leadership team. Uh, this technology was originally founded by Dr. Axo Hoos, who uh, is currently the senior vice president of GlaxoSmithKline. When he was in between BMS and Glaxo, he founded this technology at the Medical University of Vienna, liked it so much, and hiked it over to my now chairman, um, Paul Hopper, to create a company around this particular technology of invoking your B cells to make the medication towards your cancer target. So we, on, in addition to that, we have Krzysztof Zielinski, who is the president nominee of the European Society of Medical Oncology. Now, that is made up of roughly about 30,000 oncologists, and he heads up our scientific advisory board. That's impressive, Leslie, because I understand it's quite unique for a biotech company in Australia to have such a backbone. But now can you tell us about your FY17 results? What were some of the highlights? So we had a great year in that our our first in-clinic product called Herbax is already in the clinic with patients. We've gotten some really um, promising results back thus far that I'm hoping to announce fairly soon. Um, we had our existing institutional uh, investors like Platinum Capital and private portfolio managers who took it upon themselves to underwrite our options that were expiring back in March of 2017. So that brought in some funding to the company and we're waiting obviously for the R&D rebate. So we're, we're set up quite nicely. When I joined the company roughly about two years ago, the market cap was around 10 million, and I'm happy to report that it's covering around 40 million at the moment. Now to your portfolio, can you talk about your immunotherapies, starting with Hervax? Hervax was previously in a phase 1A study in breast cancer out of the University of Vienna. Now I'm happy to report that it is currently in the gastric cancer setting because we can acquire newly diagnosed patients, and we have a few patients on, and they, from what I understand from the oncologists, uh, they're doing great. So I'm happy to report that. So that's ongoing, yes. Now, Leslie, can you explain what a mimetope is and tell us about your mimetopes program? A mimetope is basically, we take a known antibody, we can reverse engineer that into a B cell peptide vaccine, meaning we can invoke your B cells to create the antibodies or the medication against a particular cancer target. And we have a discovery pipeline of those. And when we identify which one is the best candidate, meaning which one we're gonna take into the clinic, um, we will be announcing that quite soon. Aside from that, do you have any other projects that you're working on? Sure, so we like the idea of amassing things that couple really nicely or play nicely with existing biotech and pharma pharmaceutical companies pipeline or portfolio. And so we've got these things called, small molecules called arginine modulators that could in effect make your T cells um, or T cell therapy work that much better. So you could understand that in combination, um, if we can improve on an existing product, that could be quite attractive to biotech and pharmaceutical companies. And Leslie, what's the size of the market and what are the partnering opportunities? So immuno-oncology is a really hot space at the moment. Um, it could range from anywhere between a million to two billion, and they're taking deals or partnership at earlier stages, meaning at preclinical levels to phase ones. And on the average in 2016, it was roughly around 500 million for, for deals, and, but it strongly will depend on the strength of the data that we produce, the competitive landscape, and the biotech pharmaceutical portfolios on how we, fit, how we best fit in. But I think we have a great opportunity here. A more general question now, Leslie. Immuno-oncology has got many benefits above other cancer therapies, but can you explain why that's so? So immuno-oncology therapies allow your immune system to either mount a full attack against your cancer or unveils it so that your immune system can actually work like it's supposed to. So it is 
putting the word cure in front of cancer that's never been done before. So that's where all the excitement is. We find that cancer can be really smart, but immunotherapies allows your body to be smarter. And Leslie, what's the goal for the company over the next 12 months and longer term? Within 12 months, we'll have a full set of data around safety and immunogenicity around HERVAX. Immunogenicity meaning how, will we, how have we affected your immune system to attack the particular kind of cancer. So we'll have that from our first in-clinic product called HERVAX. And then with the mimetopes, we'll, uh, we'll announce the next candidate that we'd likely will take into the clinic. So we think that that's going to be a pretty interesting target, and I'm, I, I'm going to be very fortunate to announce that. And also, we'll have some um, other uh, molecules or therapies that we'll be looking at, including the arginine modulators. And we like the idea of being innovative and transformative in this space, so we might have other targets that we're also looking at. Sounds great. Well, Leslie Chong, thanks so much for the update, and good luck with the programs. Thank you so much for having me.